Today's topic is edema. What is edema? Edema is an abnormal collection of fluid in the interstitial space that may be localized or generalized. Fluid is present in three spaces in our body. The first one is intracellular space that is the space inside the cell. The second is interstitial space that is a space in between the cells. And the third is intravascular space that is inside the blood vessels. The causes of edema. Decrease in plasma oncotic pressure due to less amount of albumin. Oncotic pressure is the pressure exerted by the solute on the solvent. Here plasma acts as a solvent and albumin acts as the solute. When there is less amount of albumin which was acting as a sponge holding the water, the oncotic pressure falls and the extra plasma will seep into the interstitial space resulting in edema. The next is increase in hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure exerted by the fluid on the vessel walls. Here, hydrostatic pressure mainly increases due to the gravitational force in case of cardiac failure and renal failure. When the hydrostatic pressure increases, the extra amount of fluid will escape into the interstitial space resulting in edema. And the third cause is increase in capillary permeability, mainly in case of inflammation. Our capillaries are permeable to selective solvents and solutes. When this permeability increases or the size of the pores on the capillary walls increases, the extra solutes or the solvents will escape into the interstitial space and result in inflammation or edema. Or edema can be a result of combination of all the above said factors. Next is the question section. First question, swelling of the whole body is called as edema, anasarka, swelling, lymphadenopathy. And the correct answer is anasarka. Next question, a patient comes to the office because of acute pitting edema and pain in his right lower extremity that occurred 24 hours ago. Physical examination detects redness, warmth and tenderness in the limb. Based on these findings, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Here, we have to focus on the symptoms. The first one is acute. Second is pitching edema. The next is pain in his right lower extremities, that is unilateral. That occurred 20, 24 hours ago. Duration is 24 hours. So the options are chronic venous insufficiency, deep venous thrombosis, nephrotic syndrome, right heart failure. And the answer is deep venous thrombosis. Because the findings that suggest deep vein thrombosis include acute pitting edema in a single limb. Usually with pain, redness, warmth and tenderness. Chronic venous insufficiency typically causes chronic edema, brownish discoloration of the extremity, discomfort but not pain and sometimes skin ulcers. Nephrotic syndrome typically causes diffuse edema and ascites. Right heart failure typically causes symmetric, painless pitting edema and often dyspnea during exercise and orthopenia. Next question. When monitoring the effects of drugs used to treat edema in elderly patients, which of the following findings does not require adjustment or cessation of the therapy? Hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, orthostatic hypotension, pedal edema. The correct answer is pedal edema. Because this finding is benign and does not require cessation of therapy. Option A, B and C are serious side effects of drugs used to treat edema in the elderly and may require adjustment or cessation of the therapy. Next question. How can edema be beneficial? 
by bringing more white blood cells to the swollen area to fight infection by bringing hemoglobin to the swollen area to fight infection by bringing fewer white blood cells to the swollen area to increase infection by bringing fewer protein to the swollen area to increase infection and the correct answer is by bringing more white blood cells to the swollen area to fight infection next question what are the types of edema pitching and non pitching creased and non creased folded and non folded torn and not non torn the correct answer is pitching and non pitching now let us see the classification of edema according to pathophysiological mechanisms the edema is classified as transudative edema and exudative edema transudative edema where there is low protein content and exudative edema there is high protein content according to the location it is classified into localized edema and generalized edema according to the clinical findings edema is classified into pitting and non pitting edema let us see what is transudative edema and exudative edema the characteristic features are appearance specific gravity protein content lactate dehydrogenase cell count and the conditions in transudate the appearance is colorless and it is clear and in exudate it is yellow turbid purulent or bloody the specific gravity is less than 1.015 and in case of exudate it is greater than 1.015 the protein content is less than 3 g per deciliter in exudate it is greater than 3 g per deciliter the lactate dehydrogen is less than 200 international units and in case of exudate it is greater than 200 international units cell count in case of transudate is less than 1000 microliters and in case of exudate it is greater than 1000 microliters and the conditions where these are present are the transudative edema is present in congestive heart failure and exudative edema is present in infections and malignancies one thing we have to note here everything is in excess in case of exudate classification of edema based on the location the first is generalized where we have the uh, location the uh, the causes as cardiac edema renal edema and nutritional edema in case of cardiac edema the mainly the basic mechanism is gravitational force in case of renal edema it is mainly due to non gravitational force like nephrotic syndrome may we have periorbital edema ascites and other things and the next is nutritional edema we have we have edema all over the body in case of protein energy malnutrition the next is localized edema the localized edema is mainly present in case of inflammation which is non pitting in nature venous obstruction or lymphatic obstruction that too is non pitting in nature or miliary which is the congenital abnormality in the lymphatic system mainly lymphatic edema and inflammatory edema results in non pitting type of edema and venous obstructions causes pitting type of edema let us see what are the difference between pitting edema and non pitting edema pitting edema there is lymph edema swelling which leaves a mark when a finger is pressed into it this is known as pitting edema on the other hand edema swelling which does not leave a mark when a finger is pressed into it and feels firm to touch and does not form indentations is called as non pitting edema pitting edema usually occurs in legs feet and ankles that is especially the lower limbs non pitting edema is usually localized to certain body parts such as the lower or upper limbs some of the most common causes of pitting edema are congestive heart failure venous insufficiency or nephrotic syndrome on the other hand non pitting edema results from the problems that cause lymph edema mixedema or uh, which is a thyroid dysfunction 
angioedema in case of anaph anaphylactic reactions or lipedema. The next question, what does positive stemmer sign indicate? Lymphedema, myxedema, angioedema, lipedema. The correct answer is lymphedema. Stemmer sign is assessed by attempting to pinch and lift the skin on the top of the hand or foot depending on where the edema is located. If the skin cannot be pinched, the sign is positive indicating lymphedema. Next question. On morning assessment of your patient in room 252 who has severe burns, you notice that fluid is starting to accumulate in his abdominal tissue. You note that his weight has not changed and his intake and output is equal. What do you suspect? Options are third spacing. This is normal and expected after a burn and it is benign. Document this finding as non-pitting abdominal edema. Intravascular compartment syndrome. The correct answer is third spacing. Third spacing is the accumulation of trapped extracellular fluid in a body space as a result in this case of a burn. Third spacing can occur in body spaces such as the pericardial, pleural, peritoneal and joint cavities, bowel and abdomen after a trauma or burn. It is normal not to see a change in weight or abnormal intake or output values. Next question. Tony was diagnosed with a brain tumor was scheduled for craniotomy. In preventing the development of cerebral edema after surgery, the nurse should expect the use of diuretics, antihypertensive, steroids, anticonvulsants. And the correct answer is steroids. Steroids are used for their anti-inflammatory action which decreases the development of edema. Next question is, a nurse is performing a physical assessment of a patient who is experiencing fluid volume excess. Upon examination of the patient's legs, the nurse documents pitting edema 6 mm pit. Pit remains several seconds after pressing with obvious skin swelling. What grade of edema has this nurse documented? 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus. The correct answer is 3 plus. This is the edema grading scale. O plus, no pitting edema. 1 plus, mild pitting edema. 2 mm depression that disappears rapidly. 2 plus is moderate pitting edema. That is 4 mm depression that disappears in 10 to 15 seconds. The next grading is 3 plus. That is moderately severe pitting edema. 6 mm depression that may last more than 1 minute. 4 plus severe pitting edema. That is 8 mm depression that can last more than 2 minutes. The next is. A nurse is assessing infant in the NICU for fluid balance status. Which nursing action would the nurse depend on as the most reliable indicator of a patient's fluid balance status? Maintaining intake output chart, measuring weight daily, measurement of skin turgor, complete blood count. Though all the options seem correct, but the correct, correct answer is Measuring weight daily. Daily weight is the most reliable indicator of a person's fluid balance status. Intake and output are not always as accurate and may involve a subjective component. Measurement of skin turgor is subjective. The complete blood count does not necessarily reflect fluid balance. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos.